This video will show you how to make slick looking renders of your completed designs in Fusion 360. Alright, so once your robot is ready, you want to go to the top left and click on design, drop down to render, and then select render. So this part of Fusion 360 is where you can mess with all your settings for rendering. And you can see up here on the top left are the settings for appearance, scene settings, decal, and texture map controls. And mainly what you're going to want to mess with is scene settings. So if you click on this, you get a drop down here. And then there's a whole list of things. And you can see brightness changes the brightness of just your model. And then background, uh, you should keep this a solid color unless you have a good environment, but you can change it to a different environment. And then you can change the color here. So if I want to make it, let's say blue, I can select the color I want and click apply. And now the background is blue. I can also add reflections. Uh, I can mess with the ground here by clicking flatten ground. So here I just added a reflection and then I can mess with the camera. You can see I have perspective, orthographic, and perspective with ortho faces. This depends on what kind of look you're going for, but the simplest way to go is just with perspective. I can also change the focal length like this. And I can mess with the exposure, which is a little bit more effective than just doing the brightness. At the very bottom, there's something pretty interesting, and that's depth of field. If you check this box, you can see center of focus. And if you just click this, then you can click anywhere on the robot, and that chooses your center of focus for the render. So if I click on this wheel here, you can see right here, this will be the center of focus for the render. And then if I change blur, the higher up I go here, the more out of focus the rest of the robot will be compared to what I selected to be in focus. So a good amount, let's just say right here, there'll be a noticeable blur in the back of the robot, but the wheel will be mostly in focus. And then at the bottom here, I can select an aspect ratio, and just to be traditional, I'll go with 16 by 9 widescreen. And once you're done messing around with the scene settings, you can go ahead and actually do the render. So up here we have the in-canvas render, and you can do this if you have kind of a beefy computer. It'll do all the rendering on your actual machine. But for me, I'm going to go down to render here and actually use the cloud to render mine. So here there's more settings, like for the aspect ratio, which I already selected. And then we have the width and the height. And then I'm going to render with cloud renderer. And for the render quality, I choose final. But you could just do standard, which doesn't take any credits. I have an education account, which is connected with my school email, which means I get tons of credits. I can use these for free. But if you don't have a school account, then you just go ahead and do standard. Now you can see here the render queue time. It's less than 20 minutes. And that's just because there's a lot of people wanting to use Autodesk's computers to make the renders. So you won't get it instantly. You kind of have to wait in line. But it doesn't look to be too bad. So once I'm ready, I can just click render here. And at this point, it saves the document. And now the cloud rendering has started, and I just kind of have to sit back and wait until it's finished going through Autodesk's computers. After a bit, you'll see your rendering gallery pop up at the bottom, including this render right here. And it'll just tell you your job is currently in the rendering queue. So at this point, it's finished rendering, and if you want to download it, you can just click this button here, and then just go with the PNG, JPEG, TIFF, or EXR. And if you want a transparent background, just click this, and that'll take away the blue. I would recommend this just in general. So I'll just download the transparent background as a PNG, and then I'm all set.